Polo are all there to try to capitalize. Single file through turn number six as they go up Manitoba Drive. Roman Grosjean showing a lot of impatience. He was wearing out the rear wing of Rita's VK after he couldn't do anything with Lundgaard. He opened the door for VK to pick up a spot a little bit further back uh, up toward the front. It's Pato Award with a grasp on the sixth position, but Alex Pillow, who picked up a spot on the restart, wants that. Dixon, McLaughlin, that is a pretty good battle as it roars off of turn number 11. McLaughlin is right up on the rear wing. He entertained thoughts of taking a peek to the inside, but he's got to respect fifth place running Will Power, his teammate. Meanwhile, the lead five-tenths of a second for Colton Herta, and we've got a couple of cars in the tire barrier, and a car goes airborne. Cars were stopped along the outside wall, and Santino Ferrucci went airborne. There's as many as six, maybe seven cars involved in that incident, Davey. Yeah, big one for Ferrucci. Looked like last week his teammate getting upside down. A couple cars got in that outside barrier. Can't identify them yet. One of them was Erickson. He's been having a tough day trying to drive away, but he needs to just stop that car. It's a big problem. And going to be a red flag as Ferrucci comes around that corner. There's two cars side by side of the wall. Nowhere for him to go. Launched off of them. Matter of fact, Pato Award and Erickson's the one that caused that incident early on. Oh, my goodness. Pato Award is crumpled race car resting against the wall. Marcus Erickson in that. Santino Ferrucci a spectacular crash off of turn number one. A red flag with 13 laps to go. Lap 72 complete here at the Ontario Honda Dealers Indy Toronto. Wow, multi-car incident. And uh, Davey Hamilton, you've had a look at the replay. Yeah, what happened? Pato Ward by himself going into turn one, spins that car around. Then here comes Fittipaldi, has nowhere to go, slams into him. Then here comes Ferrucci with it, definitely nowhere to go, over the top of Pato's car, gets him upside down. Meanwhile, after that, uh, teammate uh, Siegel gets involved right on the inside. And then I think that was, so it's Erickson, Pato Award, uh, obviously Ferrucci getting upside down. I think Lundquist may have got involved with that as well. Yeah, we saw, uh, let's see, Pato, Erickson, Ferrucci, Fittipaldi for sure. And uh, it, it, thankfully, we had a couple of looks at the replay so we could clear up specifically what happened. Uh, yeah, I mean, Toby Salary also mixed up in that, Davey. So a lot of carnage here with about 13 laps to yeah. go. And this is not going to be a quick and easy cleanup because that is a huge debris field. Yeah, we looked inside. We're all actually inside with, uh, with Pato Ward. And, man, when he's seen those cars coming at him, um, not a fun position to be in. Man, we see debris. The debris field is just everywhere right now. Fortunately, every driver looks like they're okay. I see Frucci shaking his hands when he come out of the car. But I'll tell you, it was a, it was a big, big accident for all these drivers. Uh, let's go to Joel. Before that incident, Felix Rosenquist had to step out of the car. Sorry to talk to you under these circumstances, Felix. Do you have any idea what happened? Uh, the hybrid just stopped working and... Uh gave me the error and I had to come in and we tried to restart we're still trying to restart it because it's a bunch of cars that are maybe it might not continue so uh, maybe we can pick up a couple of spots here if we're if we're lucky what kind of warning sign is there when something like that happens not much it just didn't work and uh, yeah you just have to come in just the way it's built to you, you can't really drive around without it so uh, yeah fortunate but uh, we'll see if we you know we're all working really hard if you know, grab a couple of points, that would be really important. So. It certainly was trending that way at the start of this weekend. You and David Malukas both had great qualifying efforts. The two of you working together felt like you've been able to push each other? Absolutely, yeah. I think it's been, you know, we've been stepping up really since he, uh, since he, since he came along. And, uh, you know, uh, he's still in the top ten here, so hopefully he can have a good finish. Uh, we're, you know, as I said, if we're lucky, we might still pick up a P12, P13. Uh, but I was just super bummed with uh, being here and not out there. Well, we appreciate your time. Best of luck, Felix. Thank you. Uh, and Davey Hamilton, we were uh, questioning the wisdom of trying to drive that yeah. car all the way back to the pit lane. It gets to turn number three, and that uh, that, uh, that that front wing assembly on Marcus Erickson's car finally came loose and uh, and uh, forced him off the track into turn number three. They'll retru- uh, They'll retrieve him. Let's go back to pit lane. Standing here with Hunter McElray, who is out of his first IndyCar race. And, Hunter, it's been a challenging two days for you between the accident and qualifying and now out of the race. So can you even summarize the emotions of the last 48 hours or so? Oh, it's a pretty negative way to look at it, I think, honestly. Um, I'm pretty proud of the weekend, and it didn't end the way I wanted. Um, 
but you know, we just we threw ourselves in the deep end. I've been trying to get a shot a long time, and obviously I wanted to get all those laps in, so it sucks. But we had a really good race. It was kind of right before. Obviously now it's got crazy, but at that point in time it was a pretty straightforward race. There was nothing happening, and we were driving forward with a really good pace. And you know, I was just pushing in an outlap there. I got in the grey, and I just brushed the wall, and it was enough to the tow link. So it's unfortunate, but you know, I mean, look. It's a, like I said, I think it's a negative way to look at it. I think I'm really proud of what we did as a whole, the speed we showed, um, and it was a it was a pleasure with the Dale Coyne guys. Thanks to them for the shot. Tough break for Hunter McRae. We'll send it down pit lane to Joel. With Rob Edwards on the timing stand for Colton Herta. Rob, how does this red flag change your outlook, if at all? Well, um, you know, I'd say first of all, happy everyone's okay after the incident. Obviously, we would have just liked to have kept running and. Uh, you know, got to lap 85 in the position we're in now. Um, but, you know, I think both Colton and Kyle are good, good place with their cars. So uh, we'll get the racetrack cleaned up and uh, give everyone a good finish here. The fact that it is two team cars, one and two, how does that make you all feel at Andretti Global? Well, at the moment, it makes us feel pretty good. But as I say, we've got to get to lap 85 to be able to make it mean something. At the moment, it really doesn't mean anything. So we're focused is on getting lap 85 in the same place we are now. The first thing I heard on the radio when the red flag came out and cars came down pit road is everybody calling for the fans and running over, both for the engines and for their drivers. Is that in the back of your mind that there may be any kind of issues with that once they start up? No, not really. Um, you know, the, the drivers get very hot. In the, you know, the, we're thankful for the aero screen, as again we've just seen just now. But um, obviously, drivers get super hot. So just you know, trying to get the drivers cooled down and uh, make sure that uh, both drivers and cars all stay ready to go again. That's Rob Edwards trying to bring home a wire-to-wire -wire win with Colton Herta. Thank uh, the you. IndyCar Thanks, app, the IndyCar app powered by NTT Data, available to fans for free. Climb on board with in-car cameras, catch up with live timing and scoring, and car telemetry info. You can also listen to the radio broadcast. Download the app today and stay on track with the NTT IndyCar Series. Let's pause 10 seconds for staged identification. This is the IndyCar Radio Network. Red flag condition uh, because of a multi-car incident in Davy. Uh, we continue to assess and reassess. And as we do so, we see other things that we didn't notice with the first couple. And let me say this. Whoever is in charge of construction and constructing the temporary fencing and the catch fencing around this racetrack, uh, they are to be commended, Davey, yeah. because uh, while there aren't any fans on the other side of that fence between one and into two, you got to see that car of Santino Ferrucci get into the fence, and it was strong enough to push that car right back out onto the fence, onto the course, which is what it's designed to do. That's right. And remember, as we all know, this is a temporary fencing, temporary walls. So the way they construct this outstanding second and then kept that car inside the facility. And obviously not that easy to do. And obviously didn't change, you no know, cheese grate the car either. So that's always been a bad thing in the past. So a really good job of them. Uh, Hugh Jackson, obviously, Pato didn't mean to spin down the back of that car. Really loose on entry, obviously. And boy, what havoc it caused. Because come, when you commit to turn one, Mark, it is a fast, fast right-hander. You, it's blind. You can't really see what's around there. So it was Erickson and those and those other cars, Frucci and and uh, Fittipaldi come around there, have no idea he's there. Then all of a sudden, when you see him, there's nothing you can do. A uh, very very strange set of circumstances for uh, AJ and Larry and the entire Ford operation to have two of their cars go, uh, both of their cars go airborne in back to back weeks. That's right. We don't see cars go upside down hardly ever. Very very seldom do we see it. Uh, these cars go upside down, and having one team with two different drivers doing it. You know, within a week of each other, pretty pretty remarkable. I have to say this, I, I do love the the halo. I do love the safety of it. And the aero strain's good, other than it brings up a little heat. I think they can continue to fix that. But situations like that, that shows why IndyCar's on top of the safety program. First, let's hear from Marcus Erickson, who's 15. Well, Marcus Erickson has now made his way back to the Andretti Global pit box, and of course, involved in that big crash. Marcus, what did you see from your vantage point, and are you feeling okay? Yeah, it's it was unfortunate. I was you know trying to line up a pass on Armstrong, and I came through there. I, I really got a good corner, and I just mid corner. It was completely blind. I didn't see Paolo was parked there, so you know I just came around and I had nowhere to go and just hit him. And then a few cars hitting me from behind and flying around, so it was pretty yeah pretty hectic uh, and a lot of things going on. But yeah, very unfortunate. The Andretti car was fast today. 
you guys had made some advances with the strategy, trying a different, different couple of things from a bunch of other drivers. So were you happy with the progress that 28 was making throughout the day? Yeah, I think we had a fantastic race going, and it was unfortunate that with Felix, we lost, you know, potential top four uh, with that, but that's racing. Uh, we were still fighting for a top ten, and uh, yeah, just, you know, very unfortunate. We had so much speed and not much to show for. And lastly, you had made a very valiant effort to try to get the Delaware Life Honda back to pit lane. So what ultimately kept you from getting back to pit lane and maybe bringing the car to the attention of your crew to get repairs done? Uh, the left front corner was broken, suspension, and then I uh, i don't know. I think I might have overheated the clutch or something trying to get back, so we couldn't really get it into first gear. So, yeah, it was just too much damage. All right, too much damage is going to put an end to Marcus Erickson's day. Of course, we talked about it in great length. They had had a heck of a weekend with that motor issue on Friday, and it came back to make the Fast 12 yesterday, and nothing to show for it today, guys. Interesting to know, Davey, just 13 cars uh, yeah. running at the finish. Let's go to DJ. Down here at the Minfield Medical Center with Santino Ferrucci. Santino, first and foremost, are you okay, my friend? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, obviously, scary ride, but... Um, no, like I said, safety of these cars is unbelievable. Uh, happy all the other drivers are okay as well. You know, we all walked away. I don't have any wrist injuries. Don't have a concussion. Um, honestly, ready to get back in the car whenever next opportunity prevails. And luckily, it's going to be at an oval. It will be. You're looking forward to that? Are you going to be ready after this break? Oh, uh, without a doubt. All right, Santino, good to hear he's okay. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, again, hats off to the incredible AMR IndyCar safety crew. Davey, from almost the time that car slid to a stop, there was an AMR IndyCar safety crew worker right there and uh, to help get that car upright and, and make sure that Santino Ferrucci was okay. And all in all, given the debris field, an amazing job yeah. by them and the track workers here to get that straightaway cleaned well, you up. you got to remember, when you have six cars, six drivers down there, they have to make sure every one of those drivers are okay. So when they came on scene, they make sure they split up. Up, they go each direction to make sure these drivers are okay. And as you said, the debris field was pretty massive down there. So this cleanup crew did an outstanding job. And can't say enough about the construction of this racetrack. You, as you said, I mean, this being temporary course and as hard as they hit these walls and fences with no damage, pretty amazing. I, I feel pretty bad for Pottawa Ward. I mean, he spun by himself, Davey. But, uh, yeah. boy, I tell you, that that's a lot to carry on when you see the carnage that that incident resulted in. Yeah, no, and especially, you know, his car, it took a beating. And more than likely, I'm going to say that was a tub because when they came around and hit us, and actually the hardest hit for him, I think, it was his own teammate. It was the third hit. A yeah. poor chair came around there. The first two kind of flew off of him, but that – third one it really it really hit that card solid uh so the cars have restarted and let's hear from Pato one more dj's caught up with him another driver here cleared out of the medical center are you okay Pato? that looked pretty crazy yeah i'm fine uh glad everybody else in the incident was was okay um just had rear locking lost the rear spun and uh well <laughs> caused a massive incident it I mean, are, are you going to be okay? The car going to be okay going forward? Have you had a chance to assess if you're going to need a new tub, anything like that? The car is pretty wrecked, but we've had bigger wrecks. So I um, feel sorry for the guys. At least we've got three weeks to put it back together, and um, we'll be ready for Gateway. All right. We'll see you there. Yeah, love it,